good day students another uh, time we meet to discuss something very interesting in igst which is going to be the discussion on place of supply and uh, it is not a normal transaction it is a unique transaction what is the transaction section 101b is what i am going to pick what is section 10 section 10 of igst act is dealing with place of supply of goods section 10 sub section 1 clause a b c d and e respectively are the sections which are dealing with place of supply section 101b is the second scenario and unique scenario which has a wider import first thing that we need to know is what is the kind of transaction that would get fit in into this framework of 101b what is 101b talking about 101b talks about a situation where the person who is giving me an order is different from the person to whom i am going to supply the goods the person who is giving me an order is different from the person to whom i am going to supply the goods an example or the keyword which most of us would know is bill to ship to bill to x but ship to y is what is the transaction that is contemplated in section 10 sub section 1 clause b of igst act what is the big deal what is the question here the question is section 101a says where the goods go that should be my place of supply that is the place where it gets delivered shall be the place of supply but what is 101b telling us 101b is telling us take as place of supply not the place to which the goods are delivered take as place of supply as the place where the person who gave you the order is residing where he is the person who gave you the order where he is that shall be the place of supply what difference does it make a huge difference it makes let me give a practical scenario i am in chennai tamil nadu i have a supplier who is located in andhra pradesh vijayawada and i have my customer sitting in kochi kerala so what my customer in kochi is telling me is please supply me goods a type of goods is a now i don't have that type of goods but i know my supplier has my supplier is situated in vijayawada andhra pradesh so what i simply do is i pick up the phone call my supplier and tell him please give me so many numbers of a the operational efficiency that i am looking at here is instead of the goods coming into my factory or my warehouse and then getting dispatched to kochi i might as well ask my vijayawada supplier to directly deliver it to my customer in kochi but here the contractual obligation of making this supply is only between me and my supplier in vijayawada though he is delivering in kochi to a person in kochi they do not have a privity of contract he doesn't know who is he and he doesn't know who is he in those cases section 101b will kick in and that is where the provisions of 101b says don't take kerala as the place of supply which is the destination of the goods but please take as place of supply as andhra pradesh why would they do that there is a layer of understanding we should have there if i am going to have the place of supply as andhra pradesh in my invoice though that is he is going to supply to me the andhra pradesh person is going to supply to me to a person in chennai so he will say the place of supply for this transaction is tamil nadu now when he says the place of supply for this transaction is tamil nadu what will be my impact the location of the supplier is in andhra pradesh the place of supply is tamil nadu so he will charge igst with place of supply as tamil nadu then what then these goods will move to kochi directly from andhra pradesh but i also have a responsibility the responsibility that i have as a person sitting in tamil nadu is i have to invoice my customer who is sitting in kochi so to my customer in kochi i will have to raise a invoice this invoice when i raise 
in this, I will mention the place of supply as Kerala. So what would happen here? Now, the tax will go to Kerala. But the tax has already come to Tamil Nadu. Correct. The Andhra Pradesh person dispatched the goods to Kerala but invoiced it to a person in Tamil Nadu and gave the place of supply as Tamil Nadu. So the taxes travelled from Andhra Pradesh to Tamil Nadu. But the goods are not in Tamil Nadu. Hence, the next step invoicing which I have to do because it is a supply by me. My customer would expect an invoice from me. He doesn't honor the invoice from the Andhra person. So I have to give him an invoice. So my invoice from Tamil Nadu to Kerala would be an IGST invoice. But in this invoice, the place of supply will be mentioned as Kerala. The taxes will naturally go to the destination, which is Kerala. What is the importance of this transaction? One, in section 10.1b, it creates an obligation in terms of giving the person who is giving the order for the Andhra Pradesh person, the person who is giving the order is me sitting in Chennai. So he will treat place of supply as Tamil Nadu. Whereas my supply to the person in Kerala, it doesn't come under 10.1b. It comes under 10.1a because there is a delivery associated with my supply and the delivery ceases to happen in Kochi. So I will have to invoice with place of supply as Kerala. So this way the tax moves destination based. Now how is it addressed in the documentation oriented provisions? Section 31 which deals with when an invoice should be raised addresses both these situations. By both I mean there are two invoices which are there in this transaction. One the invoice by the Andhra Pradesh person to the person in Chennai to the invoice by the Chennai person to the person in Kochi. The invoice by the Andhra Pradesh person to the person in Chennai should be raised on or before removal of the goods from his premises. That is the Andhra Pradesh person's premises. This is the expectation and the requirement under section 31 for the purpose of invoicing. Now the second supply which has happened here which is from Tamil Nadu to a person in Kerala, I am not the one who is removing the goods from my premises but what I am doing is I am ensuring that the goods are reaching my customer. So in this case when am I supposed to raise a tax invoice? I am supposed to raise a tax invoice on or before the goods are made available to my recipient who is the person sitting in Kochi. So for me the time limit for raising an invoice is on or before it reaches the customer in Kerala. So this is a combined reading of a unique transaction which has place of supply residing in section 10 subsection 1 clause B of the IGST Act and the documentation timeline residing in section 31 of the CGST Act. We will see more such transactions in the days to come. Happy learning.